All right, welcome to part two of episode. What are we on now? Six of this terribleness. Oh, I'm at the uh, no, wheel uh, of time. Yeah, episode six of the wheel of time. Yeah. So we uh, we watched it together. Sam watched it live, and we got his reaction, uh, which is now, already posted. As... And now that he's had some time to marinate, marinate and have some uh, Evan Williams with a cap full of screwball in there. If you haven't had screwball, it's worth it. I just I have Dr. Pepper and vodka. So. Screwball is peanut butter whiskey. That's interesting. I got a freezer full of peaches I still want to bring down so we can make peach moonshine. Yes. Yes. Well, we make schnapps. Mm, okay. Yeah. Which we will not officially do because it's illegal. So. <sighs> All right, sure, whatever. That that's racist against your German wife. No, you know, no, no. It, <laughs> brewing beer is not illegal. Distilling is illegal in, in home. And you want to know why they keep the law in the books? Well, cronyism, I'm sure, but I'm curious what the because what it's the... a fire hazard. Okay. Has okay. anybody seen the numbers with with frying turkeys? <laughs> I was just gonna say. <laughs> Man, Thanksgiving in the South. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, speaking fire of hazard, has anybody itself, heard of a hot plate? You know, you can uh, use a hot plate. I don't know where our dozen viewers are from, but here in Texas, it's December 10th, and I just had to turn the AC on because it was too hot and humid to sleep. <laughs> yeah, but we should be getting a cold front overnight. Yeah. So if, if it cools down enough, I'll turn the AC back off and open the doors. But at sunset, it was 75 degrees with 55% humidity. And I lost 12 pounds bringing in the groceries. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that's that's kind of how it works. Uh, well, speaking of uh, something that reminds me of my sweaty ass crack, let's talk about Wheel of Time. Um, uh, before we dive in, did you ever watch the Cowboy Bebop series, the anime series? The anime series? Uh, not religiously, okay. but yes. But yeah. I, th- I think you'd seen parts of it just from mm-hmm. being around me and other nerds so i suffered through that because i wanted to talk about it and then they've already canceled it so the only quality the best thing i can say about wheel of time is it's it's better than bebop but bebop was actually a more faithful adaptation it was just crappier it was just done crap so the characters were were way off the so that that is something that I will give this series is that f- for the most part the characters are like they should be but then they just do inexplicable things that breaks with that character yeah yeah it's not the characters in general it's the the story that's around the characters yes that's... It, it, it's what no, they're Tom doing. though Tom was not Tom. Okay, no, that was not Tom in the slightest. Uh, I it, it it's easy to forget him because the series forgot him so fast. Yeah, he was what two episodes? Well, well, yeah, basically one if you do a half to the other yeah, half. Like, what, what, yeah, yeah, it's like the last half of this one, the first half of that one, and then he's gone. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm trying to think who else might. I'm not convinced about Swan. Because, uh, yeah, we haven't seen enough because because like even Matt, who's it's the story they've given him is terrible. That makes him, you know, mopey and pine for home. But when he's not being mopey and pining for home, he's he's being like you would think he would be, which is really is annoying. So his, his problem is, is his part is so rushed. Yeah, yeah. His part is very rushed because you you in the in, in the books you get the the playful, witty version of him, then you get the progression into the dagger, uh huh. And then I mean, this is him coming out of the dagger is a, a book and a half ahead of where we are. Uh-huh. Uh, so you've got about a thousand pages of progression that they went through in two episodes. Your scar looks like a bad stretch mark. You should start telling people that you used to be 350 pounds as a selling point to why they should hire you for training. <laughs> but that's almost the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I wasn't uh, 350 was max. Uh, 250 was my max. Yeah. But okay. I'm, uh, you know, I don't have a huge frame. So. Um, but it, I, to me, it's rather inexplicable what they did to Matt because he, he's your, he's your charisma. He's your, he's your pull for the more casual fan. Cause he's your jokester and trickster. He's your fun. He should be the one who really pulls you into the series. Um, because he should be the one that's more relatable to the to the fan to the viewer which is what i'm scared with the 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 way they ended the last episode is they're almost going to force a matt part because up until now he's been a bit piece yeah yeah and and i don't know what they're doing i'm i'm i'm, I'm kind of afraid with the way they ended the last this is this is what i marinated over yeah the, the way they ended the last one is they didn't actually show that it closed all the way. So he might like jump through at some point. Yeah. Uh, but that's what I'm assuming is going to happen. But yeah. But even if he does, I, if he does, it's kind of stupid. If he doesn't, then I have no idea what they're doing with his character. Yeah. Well, if he doesn't, then I'll be confused because what are you going to do with him standing there all by himself mm -hmm. in the middle of nowhere? Um, but my big problem unless is unless that's where they bring tom back in because remember spoiler alert for books you know it really because they, be. they they've cut they've melded a lot of things so this isn't a huge spoiler alert but but spoiler alert for the books he meets back up with tom in tarvalon in the third book and, and it's it's not really a uh, a spoiler because our friend t who has not uh, uh, read the books at all and is a bad person for liking this series and we can't be friends anymore. But his, his uh, comment after that that episode was, he texted me and said, okay, uh, either they suck at storytelling or there's no way that old guy is dead because there's no way they set him up to be such a badass and have him go out like a puss. Mm -hmm. uh, so you you know he's not gone because of how they set it up, which which is again a product of the rushing, because the the book gives although, you an idea that he could be gone. gone. Although this is, this is a matter of him not reading the books because they didn't set up how badass the Murdral were. And no, if he, we haven't if seen he, them do. If yeah, if he died defending the boys there, that is badass. But you didn't yeah. have enough character development to be we attached to him to a point to where you're like, oh my god, he's dead. I mean, that's a great point. We haven't seen the fade do a darn thing except look scary. Yeah. Okay. Which, which I, 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 I was really thinking hard about that because in, in the books, just looking into their eyes created fear. So they didn't have to do anything. Just looking into their eyes created fear. Their you, eyeless eyes. Yeah. But, but you, you couldn't do that on the screen without actually having something scary. Well, I don't think it would have been that hard because. You just Inle have the you, well. You, you, just, you would have to have a one-to-one -one interaction where someone just got terrified. Have the two rivers kids get fr frozen in fear, and and then Land just has to bark at them not to look at its face. That's a good point. You, know, you, you may have me on that one. And then he could then he could explain it. Which yeah, I originally thought that was that was cool because it was like a, a personification of that fear, you know. But, so they they. You haven't set up your antagonists. In fact, there aren't antagonists. Was was I talking with you about this or with Carrie? Well, there are. It's Eamon Valda and Leandrin. Yes. Okay. So this is this is the big problem with this episode in particular, but but goes to the whole series is okay, all of a sudden, just kind of, oh well, okay, because out of nowhere in a rush, we're we're rushing to the eye of the world to confront the dark one. Uh, who's that? What's that? Why should we care? They have done a terrible job of setting up the Dark One. In fact, because it, it was you who pointed out when we were talking after we stopped recording that <laughs> the Dark One isn't even the antagonist in this this season. It's mm -hmm. the only real antagonists we have are, are uh, Leandrin and Eamon Valda. Mm -hmm. Other than that, okay, we had the Trollocs and the Fade early on but then they disappear and they don't do a really good job of setting up just how scary the fade is mm -hmm. or or that there's any guiding force behind mm -hmm. the movement so 
they they kind of sort of so they they hint at it with that dark friend they meet that the mm-hmm. the there there are those yeah, that's who episode to, three and we're uh-huh. three episodes further and they haven't even talked and about then they never it. build yeah. back they on that on it. yeah you know of of there there are those who will swear allegiance to the dark one because he's going to re break the wheel and remake it in his own image and then i'll get to be i won't have to live in this crappy mining town i'll be a ruler okay so there are those who who do that but then they never build off of that they have these moments and Mm -hmm. then they don't build off of them which was my problem with the the very end there of what as you were saying what are they doing with matt and i'm saying why are they doing it it doesn't make any sense by their own the, internal the best, logic the best thing i think they can make out of this one moment is do you remember in book four where perrin jumps through as it's closing and it cuts off the tip of his boot yeah okay that, that they could show that the the the, the way he's closing is like a you know kind of a knife force you know where he jumps through at the last moment it cuts off a piece of his boot and moraine gives him a scolding or whatever my problem is it is completely contrived because okay by their own internal logic you use the power to open up the way so why can't she just use the power to hold the way gate open okay but even even if you can't do that for just okay. because okay, you're gonna so, have to be able to open it from the inside because you have to get out at some point so why are they freaking out when they could just reopen it and say matt what the hell come in but but see here's the here's the part that that i have to make a concession to you but at the same time yeah uh loyal is useless here yeah you know they they make a big deal about you need to come show us this thing and then yeah. she opens it where in the books he opens it and uh and now I'm wondering what is what's the point? What's the point of having him? Is he going to be like reading the the? I assume he's he's the guide. He's yeah. going to guide them. No, but this is the concession. Is I started liking him, uh, even though he had not a whole lot going on. He reminded me of a dude. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and that 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 next scene with him where you get a little more of him. He's he's speaking in that slow, measured mm-hmm. pace. You get a little more of his character. You get a little more of the character of the Ogier in general. So that was good, but. Oh, I remember what I was going to say about that scene. In the, in the books, it's not just, I had a dream about the eye of the world. Let's go to the eye of the world. There are a number of things that set up this Mm -hmm. move to the eye of the world. When all you have is Swan Sanchez saying, I had a dream about it. And you haven't established the power of dreams. You haven't done anything else to set it up. All right, you you completely cut out Elias, which we talked about in a previous episode. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. You need to save time and space. You still could have had the Tinkers talking about that incident that I I won't, you know, go into detail on because it's in the books and it's really interesting. But you still could have had them talking about it just around the campfire. Uh to Perrin or whatever, or to Perrin and Egwene. Maybe wait, wait, Ar- wait. you might have to talk about it because there, not- the, there are several things that point them to the to the eye of the world, and and Moraine says basically, and again, this is part of the world building that mm-hmm. there is a there is a weave, there is a loom weaving the tapestry of time, and so when when she sees three things all pointing to coming together to give information about the eye of the world and pointing to that she takes that as a sign that this is where we're supposed to go Mm -hmm. so it's not just one thing it's not just something simple it's the pattern is telling us we need to go here Mm -hmm. and and they didn't do any of that setup and it wouldn't have been that hard you could have the tinkers talk about the thing that they talk about in the books uh and then um loyal has a has a similar story he could have mentioned that in that meeting he could have said you know you know there's there's i heard a curious story uh from Mm. from other ogier and uh, i don't really have time for that oh i think this is important and then he can lay out his story which would make moraine cock her head and go 
hmm, because Sawan Sanche had talked about dreaming about the Eye of the mm. World. And then if you'd had um, had a Gwen relate the weird story that they heard from the Tinkers, there's that there's that other point pointing them to the Eye of the World to give a greater degree of internal logic. Because right now it feels like we're rushing to the eye of the world because that's what the script says we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost a little bit sad because <clears throat> you would hope that uh, a series like this would encourage reading of the books. But what they're almost doing is forcing you to read the book to even know what's going on. Yeah. But unfortunately, the, the, the second unfortunate part of it is because of all of the other tinkering they've done, you're going to start reading the books and go, what the fuck? This isn't what I was watching. So when we're talking about these things, trying to speculate in the future, you have no precedent for the fact that they're going to actually follow the book to begin with. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're using the name Eye of the World, but we don't have no idea what that means. At this oh, point. yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. what it <laughs> Is is is, the, is that scene going to bear any resemblance to the scene in the book? I'm starting to doubt it. Which I don't. I, I actually wouldn't think so because I don't think that that would be that would translate to a whole lot of cinematic value. From a, a see, I think from it a, would. It, no, I think it would from an artistic standpoint, yes, but not yes. from a uh, get to the general masses. Nobody hasn't read the book standpoint. Because it's it is very abstract, uh, like we yeah. talk about the world of dreams and stuff like that. It is it is quite abstract. It, it'd be more like uh, what's that movie with Robin Williams? What dreams may come? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be more like that in the end, which yeah. I think would turn off a lot of layman uh, viewers. And that that is one of the uh, uh, benefits and advantages of the written word versus the visual medium mm -hmm. is that that you can do that you can leave things to the imagination more um like well not H only that but you can have the thoughts of the person viewing it yes versus like, just seeing it happen and then having to to, to think about who, what they're thinking like hp lovecraft stories are notoriously difficult Oof. to adapt to uh movies or even right video there. games hp oh, lovecraft you, you have some lovecraft yeah. there yeah i got well, some lovecraft so be, because so many of his monsters are uh, beyond belief, you know, the, is the kind of language he uses. He, he doesn't give you, you know, he doesn't paint you a picture of what Cthulhu does looks like. He, he paints you a picture of what you would feel like if you saw him or saw one of these elder gods or one of these things from beyond. And so how do you visually represent an unspeakable horror because everyone's going to see something different in their mind and you might not really be able to do it justice on screen you you know your your visual representation okay well now it's now it's a physical thing and i'm not as worried or scared about it so well, it's, it's like what we talked about with jaws yes you know it, it was the the your imagination makes it as scary uh -huh. as you want it but then when they had all the stuff he's jumping out of the, uh -huh. the water roaring you know yeah yeah so like the one of the best shots in jaws in all of moviness is when they're when they're telling stories and then they start drunkenly singing sea shanties in the orca and then you get that wide shot of the orca off in the distance and you can faintly hear them singing and then all of a sudden bloop bloop those barrels pop up so you don't see the shark at all you've still barely seen him but now you see that and it's holy crap there's something down there in the dark water that I can't see that's terrifying. And when you want to play on human fears, the fear of the unknown is mm -hmm. number one. You know, yeah. you, you, if you jump into deep water, if you can't see the bottom, then you automatically start thinking about whatever crazy things could be down there. And, and sometimes it's whatever movie you watched or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why we're afraid of the dark. It's not because the dark itself is because we don't know what's in the dark. Yeah. You're not afraid of the things you can see in the dark. You're afraid of the things you can't see. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the snake you're afraid of is not the one you see. The snake you're afraid right. of is the one you can't see. Right. So. Uh, that's why I'm always paranoid when I'm clearing brush. 
Uh, well, uh, for, for those that don't live near, yeah, I was going to say near Texas, Oklahoma or whatever, the, uh, the Copperheads, they are almost invisible. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, you just, just look at a picture of a Copperhead and then imagine it in fall leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is where being colorblind actually comes in handy. Mm. Is you can see shapes better than you can see the colors. So it was easier for me to see the snakes in the leaves than it was for people who could see the colors of the leaves. Um, I'm about, I almost went off on another tangent there. Try and control myself. Um, (laughs) this is, this is, this is all about ranting and analysis so we can tangent all we want. I still think there's more of that theater of the mind you can do. Um, if you've got quality actors and, and to their credit, the actors at least have done a good job. Mm-hmm. portraying what they're supposed to portray it's just we haven't liked what they've been direct written and directed to portray so like when that that sense of fear that you're supposed to get if you look at a fades in the face mm-hmm. a, a good actor should be able to let the audience know what that character is feeling without being able to read it on the page like you do in the book mm-hmm. and and I, I think there's a lot of missed opportunity there with how how quickly everything is being rushed. And so you're just you're not getting any setup. There's no there's no depth to this world. Mm-hmm. It's all surface level. And that's where I, I think I dif- differ with you on a few people, because I think some people are very, very typecast. So naive is great when you're supposed to think she's a bitch. Mm-hmm. But I don't think she's done well in any other scene. Well, no, I disagree with you there. I think uh, I can see where you're coming from, but that that scene with Sawan, I thought that was pretty much perfect for Nynaeve that she's she's going to uh, present stubborn strength, but inside she's actually a little scared. She's in over her head, but she's trying not to let you see that. See, because she, I got I got the stubborn strength, but I didn't get the in over her head out of that scene. Well, because she she tells the she tells the uh, uh, Emmer. How do you pronounce? I don't even know how you pronounce it. Because Emirlin is what they're Emirlin, saying. Yeah, is, is how they're pronouncing it. Yeah, yeah, the Emirlin or whatever. Uh, she tells her to go pound sand. Basically, we're leaving, and then Sawan, you know, like sets her down. And, and, you know, almost looms over her just uh, mentally and emotionally, even though she's short in stature. So and, and I thought the, the actress did a good job of portraying that uncertainty, you know, because she's she is a village girl out of her element here, but she doesn't want to show it. She she doesn't want to give an inch to to this this woman who who represents everything she loathes so she doesn't want to she doesn't want to show any weakness even though she's you know internally i thought she did get out of portraying internally naive is much less confident than what she's saying Mm -hmm. well i mean again we're not trying to give away future parts of the book but you don't get that till later Mm. that she's less confident uh, I, you you did get some of her uh, point of view early on, but uh, she's still like, um, her point of view early on is still, I'm doing yes. this, and these she, people she are... is she is the wisdom, she is the leader yeah. of the women's council, who are the real power in in the two rivers in Emmons Field, um, yeah, so you don't get a lot of that until later, but still, like it is part of the character and i think you uh i think that was a good scene and and it was a good contrast between nynaeve and Egwene, who is very uh very eager and excited about the white tower versus mm-hmm. nynaeve who's there very reluctantly well that's an age difference too mm-hmm. which they mm-hmm. do express in the show the the age difference now i, I guess that uh segues into the <sighs> fact that there's could be multiple heads to the dragon i hate you so much was i was i not possibly right i mean there there's certainly i still don't know i mean 
I have a hard time believing they would they would change things that much. So 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 I'm gonna add but... a, a I'm gonna add a layer to this the onion of this theory. So layer number two is the Taverin is all part of the mix and these five are all that and certainly the three boys well well even in the books Egwene was mentioned as being possibly mm -hmm. that so yeah. uh but not nine eve uh but but the fact that they're going to use that concept to kind of mm -hmm. okay so maybe a certain person is the spearhead but at the same time, the others are all parts of the spear. Yeah. Well, that's not too much of a departure from the books, because in the books, they do talk about the boys as a three except that they're going to they're, they're going to combine a soul into multiple parts. Yeah. Versus. A soul that is this person, but no person can stand alone which was with yeah. the, the, the theme of the books. Yeah, they're, they're going to take that three-legged stool idea and just go mm. overboard with mm. it and make it silly is what I'm concerned with. And I will, I was watching some other streamers that I watch and um, earlier, and one of them, <clears throat> uh, the channel is Midnight Edge, for anyone who knows that, and he has a lot of inside info in Hollywood. And what he's been hearing is that the fourth Matrix movie the entire point of it is to make Neo no longer the one. Either he's no longer the one or he never was the one. And the whole point of the movie is for Neo to pass on the title of the one to this female protege who's better than he is. So basically the Star Wars reboots. Exactly. Yeah. And so, so if they're going to go that far with that franchise that's so iconic and that character that's so iconic i mean that's they did already with star wars which was more, yeah. even more iconic than the matrix so mm -hmm. but but the matrix is one of those movies that created its own genre mm -hmm. i mean the bullet time nonsense became a parody because so much stuff tried to copy that after the matrix and and so if they're going to do that with uh and, and there, there's also supposed to be heavy trans representation and themes in it, which considering the Wachowski sisters, is that what we're supposed to call them now? I don't know the rules. Um, that's, that's not hard to imagine. And, and so same thing here is, yeah, you can't have a, a soul that is a, that is a male soul and a soul that is a female soul. If that means there are, inherent intrinsic inherent intrinsic um unchangeable qualities about someone because i i thought maybe they could spin it the way the way the lang the modern language is about a, a female soul versus a male soul i'm a i'm a woman born in a man's body vice versa etc so i thought they could spin it that way but but the more i think about it the more i realize watching the show just how integral that yin yang that white and black that you know light and dark man woman uh interchange is that that um and that that becomes that that's part of the the uh gender dynamics that are so interesting and well done in the series is that be, because the male half of the source is tainted humanity cannot live up to its full potential because only women can wield the power you're you, you've got humanity has one arm tied behind its back and and the, and it has also made them very antagonistic towards each other instead of cooperative that's that's one of the lessons of the series that is very hard learned because people are stubborn and they don't want to change their ways and 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 Jordan does a very good job of of writing that and showing that uh, throughout the series. Eh, you're muted still. So we got to get on to the uh, the people who are putting the series on right now. Mm -hmm. So the argument is: is this for fans of the book? 
or is this to pander to certain audiences or is this to try to get a whole new audience? And by the first six episodes, I think you and I both agree that it's not for real fans of the book. Yeah. Uh, now, is it pandering or is it just trying to get a new audience? That's the big question. Uh, so I was looking for memes to make our thumbnail for the last one I posted up and I came across some stuff online on Tumblr, which I didn't even know still existed, but it does. <laughs> and this tells you all you need to know, because this is, this is the direction that it's been going. Look to the right sixth light is her handle here. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. My right. Is it on your right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Feels so queer friendly. Yeah, I think one of the things that the Wheel of Time show feel, feels so queer friendly, aside from, of course, queer, queer characters. Okay. So is that it's not doing the thing a lot of media does where it carefully takes a second point, second to point out that gay people exist in the world but the story still operates along heteronormative expectations and plot lines. So <laughs> think of the language here. The show is extremely committed to extremely non-heteronormative depictions of platonic intimacy between people, regardless of gender. Specifically, it doesn't define people by which genders they attract to. Gender, genders, meaning they could be multiple, Egwene has romantic sexual relationship with Rand and Perrin is married to a woman, but they still can be close. Be, they still can be close friends. Two men could have a conversation with <laughs> about whether one of them would be open to sleeping with men. Uh, but that doesn't stop them from being emotionally close and touching each other. Another pair of men can be asked if they're in a relationship, blah, 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 blah. So this is, this is what I talked to you about. Uh, uh, James Lindsay could could have written this because his satire about this activism is actually less crazy than the actual activism. Mm. Uh, another one to follow for those out there is uh, get on Twitter and follow Titania McGrath. It's actually James Doyle. No, Andrew Doyle, excuse me, Andrew Doyle, a British comedian, but his alter ego is Titania McGrath and she's the woke alter ego. So it's a, it's a fun watch, but this is the audience they're going for right here. The people who would write stuff like that. And if you say, I don't like it, you get shut up, bigot. Yeah. I, and, and not even, not, like it but to, to that person who's all excited about the queer friendliness okay but are the stories any good are the characters any good are those connections any good have they or, done any kind of a any kind of effort to show you the depth of these people's relationship or is it all surface level genitalia level skin level deep come on or is it even a proper representation of the books yeah now, the, I can see the arguments for this is hard to put on screen, but adding extra stuff to push your agenda is not in the exact same argument. And that's the thing. You've got to separate those arguments. Yeah. A and this is, this is activism as, at its best right here, where you push your non-cis heteronormative view on life onto the screen, no matter what the script says, the script being the original books. And if anybody says, Hey, I read the books and this is not how it was. You can just look at them and say, you're a bigot. Yeah. I'm just stating a very simple fact here. So what, why, why, yeah, why am yeah, I a bigot? If, I'm if you don't, if you don't like this, you're, you're, you hate gay people. You, you hate, you hate whatever. And that, that's the whole, the, uh, I was reading Sanderson's 
This, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I've got a meme for this because it has Sanderson in it in the meme for for the cover of this this uh, episode. It was. Uh, oh, let me bring it up so I can read it directly. Let me share. Let me bring it up and share screen. This is going to be the meme for this episode because it actually depicts exactly what we're saying. And I would love to give credit to the original poster, but I have no idea who they were. Uh, did that come through? Brandon Sanderson, I can legally say whatever I want, and I think the watch show is good. <laughs> but then look at the bottom. Clearly, yeah. Amazon asked him to do damage control. It, it, I mean, it, it really. I, li- I like that first one on the right. Brandon has to say this if he wants his books adapted. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which actually, reading his comments, he talks about his books being adapted and have to, having to deal with stuff. He's like, mm-hmm. oh, the director said you wouldn't want a director that didn't want to change some things because then it would be just your words put on film. I'm like, well, that's kind of what us fans wanted was the words put on film. But, you know, and I understand the arguments like, well, you can't do line for line. Well, yeah, because it would be a 40 hour first season. Mm-hmm. You know, that's not going to work. D- but you can actually, <laughs> yeah, clearly, similar to the story, you can at least have, well, okay. So one of the arguments was, uh, and this was not Sanderson. This was uh, Rafe, whatever his name is. Rafe uh, Lee Judkins or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And this was on the, uh, if you watch the little extras that come. I haven't watched the- any of those yet. So I watched one. I watched a few. And one of them was uh, why he did some things different. And one of his problems was the first part of the first book was very Rand centric. So he wanted to make it everybody centric and that was why he changed a lot of the things and i'm like well yeah but it was ran centric for a reason for now, for a reason yeah so and and this is back to why i hate you because i can understand that if if what you're trying to do is hide who the dragon is to make some sus- to create artificially uh, create some suspense for the viewer who doesn't know so you're trying to give equal time to all of these um but i'm afraid that it's actually because of what you're saying which is it's all of them Mm -hmm. um which doesn't make any sense whatsoever but also he's kind of i mean yeah he's kind of right if you look at the amount of you know pages and povs from rand's point of view sure but all of the characters have a fair bit to do and Mm -hmm. with how much you're cutting you can easily give each character a little more time to give some depth. Um, I feel like, I feel like the main character of the story right now is Moraine. Which actually they admitted to before this came out that she was going to be the center of attention. But let me, let me, let me further. My thought is there's a big difference between uh, changing the point of view versus from a first person to a third person which would would have changed a lot of things right to uh changing the story there's a huge difference between that because you could have shown uh rand and tam on this on the again i'll go back to previous comments uh on the road with the the silent writer that they couldn't that, that seemed like a crazy thought the that whole gives time. Rand the heebie jeebies. Yeah, yeah. It, again, like the it movie, it would have been like Pennywise sitting on the side of the road, and then Rand taps Tam, and t- by the time Tam looks around, nobody's there. You know, we could have had that in a, a minute of screen time, maybe, mm. you know, two minutes of screen time, and then uh, Perrin and Rand, but from the times Rand came in contact with them as third party visuals and you still would have had the same thing and here's my here's my ultimate point is you made this statement about having an all inclusive viewpoint but matt is basically non-existent mm-hmm. from his perspective yeah. 
uh Egwene they... is actually very underrepresented to this point uh and uh Perrin is just Ugh. not not what he's supposed to be yeah and and you know it, it uh, something else that occurs to me as you were saying that is also you know as far as who they're who they're showing and and who they're focusing on they rushed through that first episode so fast you never get a sense uh, that these three are best friends Mm -hmm. they just they just tell you they are but you don't have enough time to cement that so now they're all excited when they come back together and it's like okay You, you don't have that emotional impact that you would have if you'd actually cemented this bond between the three boys, especially, mm-hmm. um, but also, also a Gwen, but then also uh, a Gwen and Nynaeve have mm-hmm. a close bond. And, and they, they did show that a little bit um, with them, uh, with, with their interactions in that first episode. Um, but not enough. They don't really build off of it. No, they they spent so much time on that stupid floating down the river ceremony. Yeah. Uh that No, the whole first episode should have been again establishing that bond mm-hmm. between the boys, between Egwene and Nynaeve, between the the boys and the girls and and just left it at that. Yeah. You know, it's not like a pilot episode of a sitcom where you need to engage the audience right away. Yeah. Most of the audience would know the the wheel of time enough that they would have yeah, been able to... I, I was just looking for numbers because you 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 brought up who is this for and um I couldn't find any solid numbers but the estimates are about 90 million uh worldwide. 90 million copies sold worldwide. That's putting it up there in some rarefied air mm-hmm. and I don't I didn't see the Harry Potter uh, people, you know, bending over backwards to try and bring in more audience. No, they just they made the books because mm-hmm. they knew they had a built in huge audience and that any anyone who hadn't read the books that they attracted was just gravy, mm-hmm. it was just icing on the cake. So and I don't understand this. And we've, we've seen this in the past. I don't know if you watch the Stargate series, but uh, me, me and the wife watched it regularly every episode a couple of times and there was a third uh there was a third series that they made that only lasted like a season and a half or two seasons because one they completely changed the tone of the series it was no longer the kind of uh tongue-in-cheek fun adventure because uh this was after the success of Bat- the Battlestar Galactica reboot so they tried to do that basically is make it that kind of darker and grittier tone Mm -hmm. which is fine except then when the fan base that you already had a very large fan base that practically built the sci-fi network complained about it or commented on it you insulted them why would you do that give enough for the gigantic fan base you already have to get invested and then if you want to change the tone then if you want to pull in new new eyeballs you can do that but you have to start with that base that you already have you have to start with that foundation it just doesn't make any sense otherwise i'm looking for some comments from uh sanderson on this that that are uh relevant to this Well, while you're doing that, let me try and think of the thought I had. What was it? Um, okay, hold hold on. Okay. Uh, this is let me let me share a screen here. This is a direct quote from uh, Sanderson. Let's see. He talks about deviations from the story, and uh, I'm going to get to one of these that's earlier uh, here in a minute, but not the one. This is not relevant to what we were talking about right now. Uh, 
He says, it's not Rafe pandering to the audience. It might be well be that Rafe is expressing his own ideologies in the story, which, yes, of course he is. Mm -hmm. It's okay to dislike his choices, but I do think that it would be a mistake to not want a showrunner who tries to make their own version of the story. Like Jackson did with Lord of the Rings. That's completely wrong. Yeah, exactly. That is completely wrong. Because Jackson... That's, that's not what Jackson did. He, he very explicitly in all of the uh, interviews and behind the scenes things and whatnot that I watched a ton of at the time, Jackson very specifically said all of the changes they made were to condense the story that Tolkien wrote and tell his story as, as well as they could within the dime constraints of a movie. So like a lot of the a lot of the fanboys didn't like that they cut out the entire Tom Bombadil thing. Well, mm -hmm. Jackson, as a fan of the books, liked the to Tom Bombadil character in those scenes, but it didn't progress the main narrative, which was the ring. Mm -hmm. Sure, you learn some interesting background things, but it doesn't really progress that story. This wasn't Jackson's version of the story. This was Jackson telling the story within a three hour movie instead of a 300 page book. So, yes, obviously there are going to be changes, but those changes were mostly condensing and streamlining the story. But he was always cognizant of what is the main story that Tolkien is trying to tell here what are the main character traits that each of these characters need to portray and then how do we do that within this much narrower window of a movie versus a book mm. well, I think part of it is we can look at everybody everybody touts the Amazon budget but the Amazon budget is nothing compared to the Lord of the Rings budget mm -hmm. uh, Rafe what has he done yeah. Name anything. Anybody. Name anything he's done. Never heard of him before. I meant to look him up and I hadn't. But if you have to look him up, he's not the next Game of Thrones guy. All my stars and garters. Oh, she, I, I got it to you. You can share your screen so you can look at <laughs> put it up. I don't want to. I oh, this go, is so terrible. Ahead. Put it up. Put it up. Get it up, bro. The first the 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 little sidebar thing here that just jumps up out at me. It... Best known for appearing as a contestant on the eleventh season of Survivor. This is where he came from. Show uh, screenwriter, showrunner, and television personality. When I read that, I said television personality. What the heck? Oh my gosh. <sighs> wow. Yeah, let's 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 dive into this. Oh. My only beef with myself is why didn't we do this before? I, I kept meaning to look up him and these, what is it, the Clarkson twins or whoever the, the adapted for television by. And, uh, and I, uh, I kept getting sidetracked. <laughs> television career after Survivor. Yeah. Basically went from Survivor to the Wheel of Time. Well, he did do some writing on Chuck, which was a decent show, but that was an already established property that he just had to go in and write some episodes for. And so he, he wrote a handful of episodes for some TV shows and then somehow all of a sudden became the showrunner and writer for the TV adaptation of Wheel of Time. It, 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 yeah. <laughs> wow. Holy. 
All right. Sure. In good hands. Oh yeah, definitely in good hands. Okay, so the stuff I, I uh, was looking up on uh, Sanderson, uh, someone asked him about Harriet and how she liked what's mm -hmm. going on. And he gave a very, very vague answer. Oh, she's visited the set a couple times. Everything's good. I don't think everything's good. If I ever write a book, Heath, mm. don't don't let me die first before someone makes a film out of it. <laughs> well, hopefully it's a short book series, but with your bad heart and all. <laughs> it would be because I suck at writing too, but well, that's a that's not bad. Uh oh. No, uh, so that excerpt I, I, I read you earlier from the uh, cis heteronormative uh, view on everything, that's the audience. Mm -hmm. So, so the the other quote I wrote read from uh, Sanderson, where he's not pandering to anybody. Yes, he is. We talked about this while we were watching the the, the sixth episode. Yeah. Are you are you tired of being pandered to? Is what I think I said. Are you yeah. tired of being patronized? Is what patronized? I said, I yeah, patronized. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, it's it's not that they're normalized in this scene. It's that they're thrown in your face. Is that we're Badly. taking? Some, yeah, it's so that we're taking somebody who's completely out of character and making them a certain way to show we're progressive. I guess, and it, it, it's really. <laughs> It turns people off. And if you want, it, it, I, I hate to keep bringing this back up, but it's the, it's the method of activism. You do things on purpose that piss people off so that their mm -hmm. reaction is your proof that they're ex-phobic or were their ex-ist at the end. And you keep throwing something in people's face like uh, the like you said about characters transgender characters in the uh, uh, uh the, the 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 matrix matrix yeah you're talking about something that's that's a very small percentage of the population and you're throwing it in as, as if it's mainstream and then when people see it as mainstream they go what the hell is this and you say oh the fact that you said what the hell is this that proves you're transphobic well no it just was kind of thrown in my face and it's not something i see every day right and awkwardly thrown in your face awkwardly thrown in my face and then when you take a franchise such as wheel of time that had strict writings about people and then you change that into that activism so again swan and and, and uh moraine they weren't lovers it never even slightly indicated that they were lovers but now that that's yeah. a huge part of the story. So it's not even a, a little a little thing that was added in. It's this huge part of the story. Oh, more, more than that, something that occurred to me with this second watch and thinking about it after is notice the little looks and touches that Leandrin gives her. Mm -hmm. And she said, she said, she called her old friend in the episode. Are they trying to set up some sort of lover scorned love triangle thing between Sawan, Moraine, and Leandrin? You might be onto something there. But, but okay, so the other part where she basically blackmailed her with Leandrin sleeping with this dude in South Harbor is like, oh, that wasn't enough to stop her, first of all. And, and if she really thought she had some, some dirt. But the second, the second part is, no, that wasn't Leandrin. Well, I, I had a thought about that, but I don't want, I don't want to say it while we're recording because it's a, it's a big spoiler. I want to know what that, what that thought is. Well, let, let, let's pause because I need a drink for you, Phil. If we're going to keep talking anyway. Okay, we're going to pause. He's going to give me the spoiler, and then I'll determine if it's, if it's okay to say. 
Okay, so we conversed about the particular topic, and Way it is big. it is a huge spoiler if they stick to that part of the books. Yeah. It, while we were while I was getting a refill, though, it, it did make me think of um, of something else that annoyed me about this episode in particular. So, uh, kind of my train of thought branching off from Leander in there of. They actually do a decent job. One of the few things they do a decent job of is is giving you a good feel for what the Red Hajah is and stands for and and who's attracted to that Um, from the very beginning, that very opening scene with Leandrin being very chauvinistic about men suck uh, Mm -hmm. because you're you're tainted. Um, And then and then that is one of the few things they actually build on because they 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 have Leandrin as a central character. So it's one of the few things they build on from the beginning until you get to the point where when we were watching, I, I mentioned one of the few things I liked there was uh, uh, they give you an idea of the politics and the factions between the Ajah. Each Ajah represented by a color, they, they're like political factions. And so it for obvious reasons, the greens and the reds don't get along or haven't in the past. They've always been very opposed to each other. And now those, those old factions are starting to break and greens are starting to, to ally with reds. And so that's one of the few things they build on and give you an idea about something that was very big. And we mentioned it in that opening scene with low gain and the madness when what they should have said is emptiness. Mm -hmm. Um, they used the word stilled several times during that episode and they never freaking explain what it is and why it's significant. Uh, well, yeah, they never explain it, but they do use the term gentled with Logan af- uh, in respect to what Leandra yeah. did. Yeah. And so, so they put those two together to, 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 to where you know gentled was you, you taking can't, the power from him. You could infer it, but I don't think I yeah, I, yeah. I'm I'm curious I mean, we're, if you we're haven't read the from books. people who have read the books. Yeah. Yeah. So if you heard that without reading the books, I'm actually curious for those in our audience that haven't read the books yet, uh, which we need to get on a commenter here in a minute. Yeah. The latest commenter. Oh, I must have missed something. Yeah, um, but uh, but but again, how hard would it have been to set that up ahead of time? I ranted about this earlier when I was complaining about why why modern things suck, and one of them is set up and payoff. You have to have some mental and emotional maturity to to write that, and as a viewer to get into that, rather than being Veruca Salt and I want it now, um, because ch- that's that's one of the hallmarks of children is they can only focus on what's in front of them because their frontal lobes aren't as developed and their social skills aren't as developed. So when when you're when you're creating and ingesting this kind of art, you're feeding that childlike "I want it now. I don't care about anything except what's right in front of me." And how hard would it have been earlier to set up with? Uh, Ma Rain talking to Nynaeve, explaining things to Nynaeve, especially after what had happened to Loghain of what had just happened to him and why it's so impactful to someone who can channel to explain that you can be cut off from the source. Mm-hmm. And th- this is what we call it. This is why it's a big effing deal, you know? So the, the, the actor for Logan does a decent job of showing it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's good. But then they don't do a good job that, that there's an opportunity there to then set up more of the world, which is this can happen to any channeler, including women. They have a different term for it and it's a big effing deal. Mm-hmm. And it has the same ultimate effect where they just want mm-hmm. to hate my life and die at the end of the day they just waste away yeah Mm -hmm. which i thought the the one downfall of the uh steppen story was they they could have paralleled that a little bit more with low gain yeah Uh, yeah. which now they're gonna have to do it after the fact because he, he he basically got gentled steppen 
lost his Aes Sedai. And then they spent a whole episode of Steppen doing his thing and then yeah. nothing from Loghain. Yeah. And they could have paralleled that same sense of loss that they had because it's very similar in the writings of the book. Yeah. So, uh, you know, hindsight, whatever, but. Uh, well, it, it can be done. It has been done. An, an example that makes me think of, because I recently watched the last one is, did you watch any of the new Godzilla movies? uh kong versus godzilla okay so in the in the previous one uh king of monsters they they do that with the human and monster storylines they kind of parallel each other and as as the as the bad as the antagonist humans are are winning then the antagonist monsters are the ones winning and so they that that actually does a decent job of weaving those two storylines together rather than just you know monster smash which is fun and cool but in order to pull you into the story a little bit more they 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 do this cool narrative trick which again is one of those things that you're you're you might not have noticed but your brain did of of the way they weave those two storylines together and they kind of mirror each other in their rises and falls so it can be done it has been done and for crying out loud it was done done in a big dumb monster fight movie Mm -hmm. why the heck can't you people do it oh that's right because your claim to fame is being on freaking survivor well the uh, the other thing is because activism is first yeah again it's if you put something before talent or if you put put something before performance everything else is going to suffer and activism Mm -hmm. is first uh I brought up that Sanderson uh, quote where he doesn't, he's not pandering to any audience. And we've talked about before that there are these tenets of activism. And one of them is it is constant. It is constant. And uh, uh, we only need to go as far as D'Angelo to say, it's not that racism happened here. It's how did it happen? So you look at the inverse of that when it comes to your own actions. So not, 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 not reacting to something, but something you're creating. It's not how uh, such and such, whatever uh, point you're trying to make uh, is, is this a good opportunity is how can I use this opportunity versus is this a good opportunity? And this is ingrained. This is not so. So we look at somebody like Rafe. If we're going to give him every benefit of the doubt, this is ingrained in his head. Mm-hmm. It's it's not that. Hey, hey, th- is this a good time to do this? Is this a good time to 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 bring up uh, bring on my my uh, uh, non cis heteronormative view of life, or is how do I use this moment mm-hmm. to bring on my non cis header normative view of life yes Uh, and 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 you can see that it's not that he's a bad person because it's ingrained in him it's that we need to somehow find a way to push back on it in some way which hopefully we're doing but i mean we're and and it it makes sense from their perspective why Mm -hmm. someone would do that because you don't have to be a conscious activist you don't have to be someone who's who's pulling strings to try and make something happen if you are so totally convinced if you are if you have such blinders on that this is all you can see this is all you know there's no reason you wouldn't act this way uh an example i just thought of while you were talking is um our wonderful new depart uh, secretary of the interior is literally an environmental terrorist she was involved in tree spiking back in the 70s. Now, for anyone who doesn't know what tree spiking is, is that radical environmentalists who wanted to stop logging would go out and drive giant nails and spikes into trees and you know, bury them down deep so that when a chainsaw hit it, it would break, the chain would whip back, and it would seriously injure, maim, or kill the logger. Why would someone do that? Why would someone take another human life for cutting down a tree? To most 
normal people, even if you are a huge nature lover, that's extreme. That's radical. That's gross and scary that you would take someone's leg or take someone's life because they're cutting down a tree just trying to do their job. Well, if you have been so thoroughly convinced that the world is literally going to end because of things like logging, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. We've talked, we've talked about this with the, the radical CRT stuff. If, if you have so convinced someone that, that this group of people is brutally oppressing this other group, why would you expect anything other than violence? Mm -hmm. So if, if you have so immersed someone into this idea of representation, why would they think anything but representation, especially, especially from an artistic point of view, why would they think anything but I need to push this idea of representation because this is the new civil rights movement. This is the greatest moment and movement and threat of our time. Well, for, for those that want a good listen, uh, go to uh, Chris, Chris Williamson. Hold on. I just start. The hell? Really? I have something in my ear that is an advertisement. How do I stop this? <laughs> uh, it's okay, probably okay. auto-playing somewhere. Yeah, I stopped it. Okay. Uh, Chris Williamson ha has a podcast. Uh, Modern Wisdom is the podcast, mm -hmm. and he interviewed uh, the former head of Greenpeace. Yes. Yeah. And uh, shoot, now I got to get back. To that I screen. can't remember if it's I can't I can't remember if it's him or another one. Is he the one that left because the group literally wanted to ban chlorine? And he said, "Guys, I don't think we can ban an element from the periodic table." <laughs> Okay, that was part of it. Yes. Okay. That was so part of that it. Guy. <laughs> okay, so uh <laughs> Yeah, okay, so Patrick Moore. Okay, that's the guy's name. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah. Hey, I know so that. He's co-founder and ex-president of Greenpeace. So he he left Greenpeace, but he, that was one of the reasons that you brought up, but the other one was the tactics. Mm -hmm. And the antagonizing uh people into violence so basically chaining yourself to a bulldozer or or something along those lines or or strapping yourself to or, or, or shoot what do you say super gluing your breast to the street Ow! one of them yeah yeah ouch yeah uh but uh, his quote out of that was if you are antagonizing someone to be violent against you, it is not a peaceful protest. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that, that's absolutely true. Uh, but yeah, that, that was the first thing I thought of when you said <laughs> was his, his thoughts on if you're trying to create violence out of somebody else, it's still not a peaceful protest. Yes. But your spikes are even a, a step further. Now where you're sabotaging equipment there is a line there because yeah. what he's talking about what you're talking about is there's actually something in the law called fighting words mm. that if i if i start a fight if i take the first swing i i can have a legal defense if you've done something to provoke me there are certain things that you could do mm -hmm. under the law that would provoke me to punch you in the face and i i'm not guilty of assault OK, mm -hmm. there are those things that's contrasted to see. This is why I think it's really insidious that these people, uh, the, the environmental movement, the CRT movement, the, the uh, alphabet mafia, how they've claimed the mantle of the modern civil rights movement, because that was the tactic of Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King Jr. made everyone sign a pledge. And, and I can't remember, I can't remember the wording off the top of my head, um, but you should go look it up. And I, I, I believe this started at Selma with the March on Selma is everyone had to sign a pledge and it was an oath to God 
that you would not, no matter what, you would not fight back. That he said that this is how we win. We show how brutal these people are just because of the color of our skin when all we're doing is marching like any American has the right to do in a peaceful protest. All we're doing Mm -hmm. is trying to ride the bus. All we're doing is sitting at a lunch counter. Okay. They weren't, they were provoking violence, but it's because they knew that would be the response to peaceful means. Not they were going out trying to provoke violence. They just knew it was going to happen and they needed to show people who didn't live in this world you you can't pretend anymore this is what reality is here and and that's why it was so impactful because you could see with your own eyes these these people who are marching aren't provoking violence they're not doing anything trying to pick a fight and then claiming to be the victim they are the victims and that's the difference with with the protests we see now which who are you going to believe me or your lying eyes? Cause you know, your lying eyes can see that these people aren't good. These people are provoking violence, if not doing the violence themselves. <laughs> Juicy Smollett. <laughs> okay. I had a parallel to <sighs> what we're talking about. Okay. So the, I, I, I was watching the proceedings on this and, uh, <laughs> He took the stand, which was dumb. oh jeez. So, so if you want to go in the order of stupid, don't uh, fabricate a a hate crime. The second is if you do do it, don't lie about it. And the third thing is if you did lie about, don't go on the stand. <laughs> and so he went on the stand, and uh, in the cross, he he was asked. So you identified the attackers as white and he said no i said pale so back to our wheel of time discussion so every time we talk about everybody says oh you're just assuming they're white you're assuming they're white you're assuming they're white how many times in the books in the 14 books the which would be about 1500 pages of material have you heard the words pale 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 skin pale skin pale skin pale skin if we're not allowed to assume that's white how did the whole country assume that's white when just juicy Samolette said my attackers were pale of skin i don't know so pick let's one set a, let, that's, what, that's all i ask pick one Set aside the fact that the guys he hired were Nigerians who are darker <laughs> than he is. Um, well, you know, that, that's a good point because, again, as we've said, there are places where you could infer that people are, are much more ethnic than the Western Europeans that, that the center of the continent appear to be when he's talking about, you know, these, these pale people, Mm -hmm. um, because he does use other words. Uh, One of the ones he uses, uh, frequently for certain groups is honeyed, honey, Mm -hmm. uh, honey colored skin, which you can view as either a really tan white person or, you know, maybe someone, uh, of some ethnicity other than Caucasian. So there are, there are ways you can do this. And and I think I've brought up this point before is it also, it undermines the uniqueness of the Aes Sedai as a, as a, as a continent spanning group that they represent all peoples. They come from all peoples. They are, they are unique in that Mm -hmm. way. Well, so, so we got the, uh, the diverse groups we get the Aes Sedai, Tarvalon in general. Mm-hmm. And we've got uh, the white cloaks because they recruit from all over, mm-hmm. and we've got the tinkers, mm-hmm. which recruit from all over. And as we talked about before, the Shanchen, which come from a different continent, which conquered the whole continent beca- before it came it became an empire yeah. and recruited from all over. Other than that, if you're looking at different areas, they're all very segregated. Yep. And luckily, I did some research before I just reactionarily responded to a commenter who said the two rivers is more diverse than Tarvalon. 
but he, later in the books but, but he was being sarcastic because i saw his other comments and looked at his stuff and he was just being sarcastic which he needs to yeah. work on a sarcasm uh hopefully he <laughs> does because it was not very clear even to the original yeah. poster but uh but uh, let me go into a little biology here uh let's uh let's parallel uh, the two rivers to some modern day stuff and you look at an area that's been very genetically homogeneous for a approximately a thousand years according to the books and uh, people are, are intermarrying across the way. So, so this is a place isolated other than the occasional Tam who leaves and comes back with a new mm -hmm. wife. Mm -hmm. uh, you're looking at a very, like you said, like, like I think you said in the first, in the, the pre watch episodes that they would be just kind of like a mud, you know, all together. Uh, and so we have a modern day equivalent to that and it's Iceland. Iceland is a Western culture, which is exposed to all the travel and everything we have now. But any of that is very uh, kind of new, realistically, when you look at a, a genealogy. Mm -hmm. So it's the grandparents, grandparents, maybe at the most. Uh, you want to know what the average uh, distance of, of relation between married couples is in Iceland? Huh. Third cousins. <laughs> that shouldn't be surprising, give, given the small pop the small population and how, how isolated it is. Mm -hmm. Un until yeah. very recently, where where world travel has become much more uh, within but, the reach of that, the normal. Those person. are current numbers. So even before it would have been even mm -hmm. less. So you're looking at a place like the Two Rivers. That would be similar. So your 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 biggest uh, degree of, of of separation would be third or fourth cousins. So the genetic uh, homogeneity would be pretty substantial. Mm -hmm. And if you want to talk about dark as an old root, and he's a roofer, yeah, where he's out in the sun all the time. But then you have similar co uh, comments about how pale their skin are. Well, sun dark is different than regular dark. Yeah, you know. yeah. You know, your 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 little diatribe there just made me think of something too. That there's a there's a very good reason the two rivers is so isolated, and you don't get this in the show. Uh, and the reason everything is so isolated is because the continent has really been depopulated, and I won't go into mm. why. Um, because that's that's spoilers for people who should read the books. But there are vast, vast swaths of empty territory where there's just there's no one. Mm. Maybe there'll be that maybe there'll be some crazy old hermit living out there or, you know, you know, freeholders trying to cling on or whatever. But there are vast swaths of nothingness between the the countries and it, it talks about that of, of how countries will claim up to a certain line but they don't they don't actually control out that far and they don't have you know they don't have influence or even mm -hmm. populations out that far that that if you actually drew the the political lines on the map you would see huge empty spaces and it and it 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 talks about that through the history of the world that they have done nothing to, to help you with here, which could have been addressed with the travel too. Yeah. Well, it should have and, been Camelin, but then ended up being Tarvalon. And know. it's not just grumpy old nerd ranting about how it's different from the, the book. Part of the point of that in the story is to set up how disadvantageous humanity's position is compared to the dark one. Mm -hmm. So not only are they fractured and, and antagonistic towards each other, massively so, which again, we're not getting. The only, the only true antagonism we've gotten is the White Cloaks versus the Aes Sedai. You have, you have gotten nothing about the other countries in the world, which, I mean, that, that, that was one of the, dis the great disappointments of Game of Thrones is because in those first few seasons, they seem like they're setting up hey, we're sitting here fighting over this throne and we have this existential threat 
that is slowly coming towards us and will wipe all of us out if we don't work together. And then that turns out to be nothing, but that's a rant for another time. That's a major plot point for the Wheel of Time is they haven't used the term enough, but they've used it a couple of times. The last battle is coming. Mm -hmm. They needed that should have been something that has been, especially amongst the Aes Sedai, something that is drilled down and, and drilled into the audience more of what that is, what that means, and how utterly unprepared humanity is for what's coming. See, I'm going to take a different perspective there as I don't think it should have been a big deal right now. But I also think that the story should have been more character development up until this point. Yeah, it, 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 kind of like why the heck are they showing, you know, why, why the heck is the dragon reborn there in the first episode? Mm -hmm. You know, that, that shouldn't have happened. But I, I do think you can, you can talk about the signs and the prophecies of the last battle um, at least, at least amongst mm -hmm. Moraine and Sawan and Lan, they can talk mm -hmm. about that kind of stuff um, to let the audience know. Even if the even if the world doesn't know, even if the kids from well, the see, two rivers see, are what they could close. have done is what they actually did in the in the books is have flashbacks. Luce there and wondering what happened to his family, and he notices he killed his own family. That, that prologue is one of the best. Yeah. Uh, in media res I've ever read or seen because you are completely lost when you read the prologue to the mm -hmm. eye of the world. I, I almost want to uh, the, the people who have commented that they haven't read the books. I, I kind of want to make you read it and let me watch while you read it because you will be completely lost, but you won't be confused because it's so well written. You understand the scene within itself but you are utterly lost as to how that fits into the grand scheme of things okay two thoughts first of all let's get the people have who haven't read it let's see if they'll go on online with us and, and do something on that uh the second is uh what was my second thought damn it okay so the first was there still there but the uh the second thought I'll have to remember. Uh, I'm going to blame what? COVID. I, I always blame COVID. So it's definitely not all the head injuries and drinking. <laughs> Can't be that. I'm I'm really annoyed because I I've actually uh, the first several books are out on loan, so I don't even have them. And the terribleness of this series has made me want to reread. And I haven't I haven't read the series in years um, because I was so. I mean, they weren't Game of Thrones bad, but but Sanderson just isn't Jordan, and so no. I, I was kind of disappointed in the last. No, his 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 books. style was was very was very different. Uh, he he kind of he kind of picked so so where Jordan would have everything all over the place, but you could you, you, there was still a co coherent story going going forward. Mm -hmm. Sanderson always picked two, so you kept going back and forth all the way through uh so it was it was different but it it was not as because he was picking two in a story that had you know 20 or 30 main characters it wasn't as coherent going yeah, forward yeah and these these smaller characters would suddenly pop up out of nowhere and mm -hmm. it was like oh wait what 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 what's been happening here and it would just kind of blindside you and stuff would happen and and, and yeah and i had some beefs but i don't want to say it right now because yeah yeah of spoilers yeah we'll we'll, we'll we'll maybe maybe after the maybe after the what's uh series we'll get we can do some books and t book talk and have some some heavy heavy spoilers with the book talk um but i've, I've got to get my books back and we've got to uh uh, we've got to finish these last couple episodes. <laughs> what do we got? Three more? Four more? Two, I think. This was six. There's, there's eight. There's oh, so really? okay. The, the the seventh episode is Into the Ways, and the eighth episode is Eye of the World. Those those were the titles that I saw on MDIB. So I'm assuming by those titles, we're gonna have a whole episode in the ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were cool and like dangerous and everything, but they weren't. 60 minutes of interesting well they they could be if if you're finally going to slow down 
and actually have some character development. My True. concern is, is it's too little too late and you're going to try and you're going to try and rush it and cram it in there. And then you're going to have to have an obligatory action scene somewhere. Um, well, which is built in in the books. Yeah. With the ways. If they do it right. And, and, and they have set it up. I won't say how they've set it up for anyone who hasn't read, but they have set it up of what's coming here. Um, so I'm, I'm assuming they're going to have that, that scene, but I just worry that they're going to. Bahrain centric. It... Yeah. 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 Because loyal. I mean, he was. He was central to that whole thing and they kind of just put him in there and then took him out of it. He also, he, he also serves as exposition for the reader because he is so knowledgeable within the world. He's so well read. He knows the world's history mm -hmm. better than our character, our main characters do that he could serve as exposition for the reader without being boring. Cause it's not just the author telling you x y and z it's an interchange between loyal and rand or loyal and moraine or whatever you know just thinking about it just thought just now what might not have been bad for this whole thing was to have a narrator over certain parts in his voice mm. <laughs> no yes because in the books he's writing a book he's writing he's, a book about the main characters he, he interviewing he, them and everything so in those little bits where in between you don't kind of get something yeah yeah he could have narrated something in he's, between he's bilbo writing there and back again yeah yeah so that that actually and the, would the actor have has a great a voice too. he does he, he really he does he would have been a, a great narrator so mm -hmm. yeah my, my guess is they thought that would be boring and it would take away from the, the fast paced action and the cool scenes. Um, and I think that like the, the consensus from the nerds I've listened to or talked to is the uh, well, I know a lot of people. There are people who don't like Blade Runner with the narration, but I think more people like it with the narration because it helps the story flow better. Uh, now, it, it can be done badly for sure. And, and there mm -hmm. have been examples of where it's been done badly because the narrator is just i mean is just giving you a list yes mm -hmm. if you have a narrator just giving you a shopping list but with your idea the narrator is part of the story yeah well and and He's what part I'm actually, of the story within the story what i'm actually thinking too is remember uh the uh the the disney robin hood <sighs> yeah so like that the minstrel yeah robin hood yeah. And little john yeah robin yeah. hood and little john yeah yeah the rooster yep best robin hood adaptation ever yeah oh still one of my favorite movies of all time so yeah that's saying something <laughs> no it's a good it's a good show i still watch it so oh yeah yeah for sure uh but yeah not i mean i didn't even think about it till we were talking but yeah that would have been cool have have him kind of narrate throughout and then you see him in character and you're like oh that's a narrator oh cool awesome. yeah that that would have been a great reveal because you don't see him until what was that episode four or five five i think yeah you, you don't see him till episode mm -hmm. five when you get to tar Valon, uh when, and when rand runs into him and uh it would have and been then, a great and, reveal and then after that just show him taking notes at certain points you know just just taking notes mm -hmm. I, I still wish he would have been bigger. It's a shame that we weren't on Survivor, so we could have done this. <sighs> oh. You know, I actually applied for the first season. I'm so glad that uh, I, I never heard back from him. Because when, when I read the article about, about Survivor, it did not make it out to be what it was. It, it made it out to be more like... Um, uh, did you ever watch any of Les Stroud, the Survivor Man guy, who was just out there on his own with some cameras that he would set up? He didn't have, he wasn't like Bear Grylls with a crew following him. It made it sound like Survivor. It made it sound like mm -hmm. a survival situation, not a stupid game show. 
It's like, and then when it actually came out, I, I watched the first episode and went, Ugh. yeah. So, so reality TV is uh, the biggest sham ever, by the way. Yeah, uh, they all have uh, actor certificates and they're trying to get their actors' licenses and stuff. So, uh, the, the, the snarky way that Rush Limbaugh used to talk about it is uh, reality TV is just regular TV, but the writers are non union. Okay, so for also those in the audience that follow our political stuff, uh, look up who the uh, president of CNN is right now. He is a reality show creator. Yeah, yeah. And during 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 the during and right after the 2016 election, people gave the uh, the guy who did The Apprentice so much crap for creating Donald Trump. It's like that poor guy, <laughs> that poor guy, he he's not any different than any of these other schmucks. He just happened to be the one that along with all the other stuff he did, he did the apprentice, <laughs> mm-hmm. but he's the head of CNN. So, you know, whatever. Uh, anything else about episode six? No, like, like I, like I said, when, uh, when we, we watched it, when you watched it live is. I don't know if there just wasn't as much going on here or if the or if by the fifth episode, I've just been broken because I was just watching it mechanically. I was just like, nah, and all the stupid stuff that happened, like more rain and so on, sexy time, nah. the, the stupid contrived ending, uh, roll my eyes grown. But I was so annoyed by Oh, by all of it, but especially the end of episode four and five, because there were good elements within those two episodes, especially uh, like like we talked about, like like, like with the tinkers and mm-hmm. and with land and the warders. And then you get to the end and it's what the hell are you doing? So there wasn't a whole uh, lot good in this one before the end, though. It just was. There was OK. It was yeah. OK. It was. Yeah, there was there was stuff that was OK. Now, what I will say is there was good in where I think they're going with this. Maybe, yeah. Maybe, but but I I, I still see way more bad, and it's all your fault for for pointing out this. Which is exactly what I'm saying. <laughs> the tale that I heard from a gleeman about a multi-headed dragon. Oh, jeez. Oh God. Was a gleeman named Tom? I don't know. Who knows? Who cares? Who knows? Maybe that's their love that's story. Starting. That's all ruined anyway. You no. Know. All right. Well, we'll we'll pick it up where we left off with episode seven. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, what, what, I was I was thinking about doing the the season finale live if uh, us old geezers can figure out how to do it. So, if anyone would actually want to see that and watch along with us uh, when it drops, uh, either the twenty third or twenty fourth. You know, pour pour your eggnog. Make sure you give a double dose of bourbon in it, and uh, and then we can watch along live. If if anyone would be interested in that, then comment, and we'll see if we can make that happen. Otherwise, we'll just do it like we've been doing it. Yeah, that would, that would actually be cool because I actually want to do a show with comments coming in. So, that, yeah, that that would be fun. That would be fun. Uh, so get your friends together so we can have three people in the audience. Yes, uh, all three of you. All three of us. Uh, I'll try to get some strippers on board because that's how I roll. <laughs> I probably I probably shouldn't take my shirt off and rub my nipples with my I Miss Abe shirt that I got at the uh, Abraham Lincoln Library in Springfield. So, so uh, we did get a comment. We didn't have enough diversity of thought on our program. And the fact that Heath's just joking about that, but i would do it is uh yeah you 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 maybe need to watch more of our episodes because we we disagree quite a bit when we talk about our political stuff which is Uh, which is actually my beef with this whole thing of the freaking wheel of time he mm -hmm. wrote it in we got diversity of skin we got diversity of thought we got diversity we got we freaking got polygamy diversity of thought big time polygamy big time big time it's central 
to the whole. I mean, we, we have the, asexual people. That was my rant about Moraine and Sa- Sawan. Is they ain't got time for that nonsense. They're yeah. focused. They're we got driven. asexuality. We got polygamy. We got homosexuality. We got we got everything written into the source material. You don't have to force it. Yeah. And when you force yeah. it, we just know you have an agenda. Yeah. And if when you force it, it feels forced. It's uh, as I've said before. It, yeah. It's why conservative with capital C and or Christian entertainers are almost always flop because they're that first and the entertainment comes second. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the the thing I read you earlier, it was like, it was actually acting like it wasn't forced, but it it's the opposite. Mm -hmm. It's the fact that yes, we do live in a cis heteronormative society, but it exists Mm -hmm. and that's what's normal. What's not normal is that everything is just loosey goosey and the uh, freaking revelations or whatever you want to call it, you know? Uh, and that's okay. That's cool because yeah. it, it is the, the minority of persuasion. It doesn't mean it's evil. It doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean it's any of that. It's there but it's not the norm. And when you start placing it as the norm, then you're forcing it. Yeah. Because it never will be the norm because we're not genetically inherently made that way. Yeah. It's not how we're, it's not how we're wired. And this is, this is coming from the dude in the conversation that That is the man whore. Yeah. That is the man whore and argues for the genetic basis for, for the things that happen. So. Yep. Yep. Go, go, go watch. I think that was our first sexy time talk is when we were talking about chatting with Candace and, uh, and polyamory and monogamy mm-hmm. and other stuff. Mm-hmm. So there, yeah, if you think we don't disagree, if you think we have, we're, we're too same minded, go look at that. We're same minded about wheel of time in a lot of ways, because we've both read the freaking books and who are you going to believe this crappy series or our lying eyes that read the freaking word, which I need to respond to that one a person who's, who says, uh, oh, hold on, let me, I'm, uh, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to share a screen with their name. Cause if you're going to make asinine comics hey, public anyway, yeah, they're going to be up there. All right. What if we get here that I haven't seen this guy right here. See Extinction that? rebellion are very, very still. Oh, geez. What the hell? Okay. No, no, anyway. no. K G H T two, two, two. You see that? Yeah. Okay. Da, da, da. I love how channels like this are full of new readers and, and folk who haven't read the books. Just look at the comments. Please, guys, just go watch something else. By the way, did you not watch this video? Oh, no, excuse me. By the way, did not watch this video. So he didn't watch it. Only click to look at the comments. None of you know anything about what you are trying to talk about. It is so hilarious that I might do more of this comment snooping in the future. Wow, you're a moron. So you're dogging people for not reading the books and watching the show, but you're dogging, but you didn't watch our show. Ah. He got a thumbs yeah. up. I don't know if we can see who that came from. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so there are at least two idiots in the commenting section. Yeah. You. No, no. I, at least one gave a uh, a very legit woke perspective of it. Oh, really? Rather than just you, you all suck based on the headline, even though I didn't read anything. We're perfectly fine if you want to give us a because. If you've ever bothered to watch us, we try and steal man arguments, not straw man them. Yeah. So, 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 so the, the one I was talking about that, that gave this, is this guy here, who, oh, who yeah, was the yeah, one we, who, we've who brought up this. you. Yeah. We discussed it. And he brought up quotes from the book. A, a freaking quote. Yeah. So, so that's a good argument. So I was very respectful in that, in that answer to that. Uh, but this guy, you know what? I'm tired of all these be nice to everybody. Yeah, Podcasters. you're an idiot. Um, there is it, a such thing as a stupid yeah. question and a stupid comment, and you made a stupid comment yeah, you, we're by, your own admission, by your own admission. By your own admission. You just said, 
how how do you lack how do you lack self awareness to such a degree that you can say that you can admit I have not watched this video, but this video is stupid and you should go watch something else. How do you lack so much self-awareness that you yeah. think that's okay and that no one's going to look at you and sit and point and laugh like Nelson from The Simpsons? Because he thinks he's a badass. I guess. He's got, he's got his keys on that keyboard just typing away. You know, It's probably not even a real name behind his pseudoname, so... Well, I mean, it's like you said about LeBron. This is someone who's never had his ass kicked, and it shows. Yeah, but but at the same time, yeah. So so to all the viewers who have watched these, if you give a legitimate response in rebuttal, yeah, we will be very respectful and polite in how we yeah. answer you. But if you give an asinine piece of crap, uh, straw man, whatever, insert your your fallacy here uh argument we're not going to be as as political about it why well, should gonna call we? you an you're going to call you a freaking idiot to your face mm -hmm. and if you have no response to that guess what and, and we would do it to your face because we have had our ass kicked so we're not just keyboard warriors yeah okay so <laughs> we have had our ass kicked and even with one arm i could still kick some ass <laughs> so <laughs> it, it happens i mean uh no, th th this whole t Twitter war that has become normal mm -hmm. is part of our freaking problem with all this. Yeah, there's uh, there's bringing it back to Wheel of Time. There's no humility. Yeah. And that that, that is a up. that is a common character flaw in the Wheel of Time. And there are characters who like uh <laughs> Like Moiraine and Nynaeve are both arrogant characters. Nynaeve never really learns. <laughs> Moiraine does. And it shows. It shows in the text. It shows well, in the Not books. to be a spoiler, but Nynaeve does learn. She does, but she never admits it. She never really admits it. She does. <laughs> in, in the cleansing part. Okay. Yeah, a little bit there. Yeah. yeah. I mean, a, a lot of bit there that they yeah. did the one of the biggest things in the books <laughs> yeah that's a, that was a big effing deal yeah yeah so so that that is that is one of the that is one of the problems of our age as well as of the third age in the wheel of time is that there's a lack of humility and and it leads to all kinds of problems uh just just like there, there's a lack of humility with this I mean, you, you shared the stuff Sanderson said and, and the stuff others have said who, who are part of the creative team of this. There's there's no humility here. There's no humility amongst these. That, that thing that Sanderson said about Lord of the Rings that made me so mad, it's Jackson was very cognizant of the fact that this was not his work. Yes, he was the filmmaker. He was mm. the one that was adapting it to the film. But he and so many others, like Christopher Lee, who played Saruman uh, and also has a heavy metal album because he is a legitimate badass. And, um, and they were very cognizant and respectful of the source material. They all, they, all of the actors will talk about how they had copies of the books on set and they would refer to them and they would talk about them because they had enough self-awareness and humility to know we are adapting something here and we are going to put our best talents and efforts into it. But ultimately the foundation is this thing that someone else did and has sold 200 million copies. I'm, I'm pretty sure Lord of the Rings is still second only to the Bible in copies sold mm -hmm. worldwide. And, and we are going to be respectful of that because we are not, all that is there are others who have come before us and they did good stuff too i'm I, i'm almost this is speculating to 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 a large degree but i'm almost curious how much so so we see with this big trans activist movement and the erasing of women so feminists should be pissed but the radical feminists aren't uh, feminists should be pissed about what's going on in the last 10 years, uh, 20 years uh, 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 of uh, the trans movement.
because it's it's kind of erasing everything they've done Mm -hmm. and we see a lot of this going on in this program as well is yeah you look at badass women but then we've erased the fact that this there's a male and a female half of 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 anything going on so it's almost like you could just say oh yeah Nynaeve's a dragon because she's a man in a woman's body yeah so then you know they're they're, they're, they've set that up that's not ridiculous at this point how does that not track from her yeah Yeah. uh so I, i i just see a lot of the the same patterns that have gone in the last many years uh forming in here and i hate to put uh, i never like to assign motive on people uh because that that that's the hardest thing to prove is what people were thinking at the time but rafe's past and his 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 recent work uh seems to be ideological versus what should be for the source material and uh i'm i'm sorry sanderson's not doing a good job of of pushing back on that mm-hmm. he he says he's trying to make it closer to the books but i i i either his ability is limited or he's not doing a whole or lot. his will is limited yeah one of the two because there comes a point in time where if you actually believe it like mm-hmm. i ranted about with the withdrawal from afghanistan and there comes a point in time where if you really believe it, you need to put down your resignation and walk away and say, I'm not going to be a part of this. Yeah, you you wanted a big money version of this and a real adaptation. You wouldn't have Rafe Jenkins or Junkins or whatever his yeah. name is. Yeah. You would have Jerry Bruckheimer. He, or, he would do a legit adaptation. Because look at his work with Lucifer from the comics i didn't know that was based on something yeah yeah it's based on something and it's one of the best I, I, again i'm gonna i don't know if you've watched it yet but it is one of the best series to date since since we watched shows as a kid really mm. uh but but he refused to follow any agenda he just told a freaking good story yeah uh vikings is another good mm-hmm. another good one uh, uh, like you said before, better acting than uh, History Channel ever deserved, right? Right. Uh, Last Kingdom was good. Yeah. I, I don't yeah. know if you want to add any shows to the to the. No, but you know, and there there's some crossover with the actors there, and and it just makes me shake my head about the missed opportunity of instead of this guy from freaking Survivor and wrote a handful of episodes for Chuck mm-hmm. and marvel's agents of shield what about the guys who did last kingdom or vikings that was both critically well received and had large audiences and was well done you couldn't have gotten part of that creative team to help adapt to this Mm -hmm. well the cat the casting Uh, director from uh last kingdoms was supposedly for you know uh uh will of time but at the same time it was obvious there was a a different criteria for casting versus what was done before if you if you could prove to me that these were the best actors and actresses that walked in the room then i would be like cool awesome great let's go with it but But i have i have trouble believing that i have trouble believing it just by sheer numbers i mean realistically just just looking at how many of these people come how many of these people are British? How many of these people come from British television and movies? And you look at the, the, all of the stuff from that and think that there, there wasn't anyone else that could have done this. Mm-hmm. So aesthetic, you know, and then of course, of course the, the big problem is the writing and directing and it's, there wasn't anyone else that could have done this. Yeah. So everybody touts the budget they have and what they want to be the next game of thrones next lord of the rings etc they didn't spend the money that required that or or at least you don't see it that's one of that's been one of my complaints is there are times where the set looks the background looks really great and there are times where it looks like a cheap tv show and it just makes me think 
where did you spend your money? Because Mm -hmm. it doesn't look like you had a big budget. Well, I think we should end there Mm because it's getting late and uh, Uh, we're just starting to ramble at this point. But yep, 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 yep. It's it's really hard to stop because we got so much to fucking bitch about. So we've we've been I've been reading these books for 20 years. You've been reading these books for 30 years, practically. 25. You you know, a funny little story. So you want to know where I got the first book I read? You 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 found it like on a in a drainage ditch or something, didn't you? Yeah. So so we uh I was a kid and my dad lived in El Paso. And so we were on a, a, a long road trip with him and uh, we we're driving back to El, driving to El Paso with him. And I had to pee because I always had to pee, which I still always have to pee. And uh, that's not an old man thing. I just always, I always had to pee. And uh, we stopped and it was in a freaking ditch on the side of the road where I had to pee. Wasn't and it I, book three? Didn't you it start was book, with three. book three? Yeah. And you had no idea what was going on, but it was so well written. You didn't yeah, it, w- it was freaking awesome. And it took me a while to get into it, but I was like, Hey, this is a really good book. Yeah. And I found it on the ditch on the side of the road. Cause I had to pee on the way to El Paso. So it had fallen somehow out of somebody's car in the middle of nowhere in West Texas. Nice. Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah, l- luckily for any of the dozen viewers out there, you don't have to go pee next to a road in the middle of nowhere, West Texas. Just get the book and start hey, reading. I still have that original copy. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Don't, 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 don't wait, start reading. And, and, and we will, I think, after the end of this series, start talking about the books because this has made me want to reread and talk about the books because they are so well done. Okay, so to our uh, naysayer who talked about our commenters who haven't read the books, I've read the books all the way through twice. Yeah. Yeah. And I know you've at least gone all the way through once. I I think I've read book one through 10, like five times each. Okay. So yeah. Yeah. So books one through six, I've read like five or six times. Then one through nine or 10, I've read Mm -hmm. three or four times. And then all the way through, I've read twice. So yeah. uh, There was a point in time where they were so far apart that, you would reread all of them before the next book came out. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I think that was about book five or six. Yep. Yeah. So. All right. Well, get to it, viewer. Or maybe there's viewers. I don't know. Viewer. All right. Uh, maybe. <laughs> all right. Later, y'all. Later. If you're hot, text me. <laughs>